How's it going, super friends, and welcome back to my channel. I know somewhere in the annals of Brad the DC Universe Geek, I could be found quoted somewhere as saying something along the lines of, I don't plan on opening it up to multiverse suicide squad figures. It just don't interest me that much. I'll leave that to somebody else. And yet, here we are. Eight multiverse suicide squad figures. Listen, there's an easy explanation for this, okay? Middle of the night, clickety-clack, a few beers, an eBay account, 60 bucks for six of them, the Rick Flag, $4 at my Dollarama, and then it was like, well, I gots to get Diablo, and here we are. Eight figures later, and one camera setup. Let's open them all in this video. It's not gonna be regular format. I'm gonna open these up as quick as I possibly can. So here we go. And first off, we have Rick Flagg, who comes complete with military pants and boots, khaki color shirt, and bulletproof riot vest. Okay, I definitely underestimated these figures, you know, looking at them on the store shelf. This is actually a pretty darn good figure. I just really wasn't interested in these. Let's look at his accessories first before we look at the rest of the figure. He comes with a little made in China knife that just fits right here when he's not holding it in his little vest there. He comes with a little tiny sidearm pistol, which is also made in China, that fits right here in his belt in the holster, also when he's not using it. He also comes with a grenade launcher for when he wants to blow stuff up, as well as what appears to be at least a semiotic, possibly a fully automatic rifle with a scope. Up close, there is a fair amount of really cool looking detail with this action figure, and it is actually executed really, really well. For some reason, this just looked a whole lot cheaper in the package hanging in the Dollarama, but this is actually a pretty darn good action figure. Rick's face up a little bit closer is actually not a bad likeness to the actor whatsoever. There's some shading in the top of his hair, and his head is actually sculpted quite nicely. Overall, I think that I'm a lot more impressed with this figure than I thought I was going to be. And out of the packaging, here's Diablo. Not a bad looking figure for the most part. There definitely are some areas that I wish they had it done differently that just kind of look weird, but I think overall this is a very cool looking figure. You got all the tattoos on his face that look really nice and crisp and nice and clean. Actually all the paint is exactly where it needs to be. Even the eyes look good. You got the scythe on his forehead, the devil horns on the side of his face. It looks like he has a mustache and beard with the tattoos. I've always thought that. On the back you have his tattoo on the back. Everything is actually printed on really nice. Even the logo on the back of his jacket is really, really painted on really crisp. Yeah, I'm happy with the paint job of this figure because sometimes Mattel figures can be a little bit rough. There's his torso looking kind of thin up top and maybe a bit pudgy down below. The chain hanging down from his shirt, <laughs> not his pants. I guess that's just the way that they sculpted it. But the color scheme looks good. The figure does look pretty good overall. Pants, you got the Converse shoes there down the bottom. Or maybe they're feelers or something. There's some kind of like fashionable sneaker. The only thing I would do differently about this figure is not a huge fan of the hands. The hands are really kind of big and, and weird looking. Yeah, I get what they're trying to do with the whole fiery hands thing. I'm just not so sure that it's executed very well. I'm not a huge fan of it. Let's pop these hands off. Uh, uh, oh my God. Uh, holy jeez. Really did not want to come off. And then, what? What? Ah! It's a good thing I've always got a set of needle nose pliers. Ugh, I can't believe that. That's such a stupid design flaw. They just popped right out. Uh, in you go. That's better. There we go. Yeah, I get, I get what they're trying to do with these. I usually try to find positive things to say about things while pointing out the, the truthfully negative, but these are just really ugly. They look like gummy candies. They're not very well painted. I just, I really don't like them. I'll just put them off camera over there on the floor. With these hands, a very cool looking figure. Let's pop him back here. And next up we have everyone's not favorite bitch slapping pimp joker. And I say that because, I mean, look at him. He looks like a pimp. Look, here's his pimp cane right here. And here's the leg of the last fool that didn't pay him for a hoe. Okay, joking aside, I think Leto actually was a pretty good Joker. It was just everything else that surrounded the Joker. Like the overall look of not only this figure, but the Joker itself. 
you know, the alligator, the purple alligator trench coat, Mattel did a good job of, of executing, of making the trench coat. I just wouldn't have gone with that in the first place myself. Then you have the copious amount of chest tattoos, which again, Mattel did a good job actually stamping these onto the body nice and clean. There's no smudge or nothing, but I wouldn't have gone with a tattooed up Joker. And then the face sculpt itself looks actually pretty darn good, except for he's got the forehead tattoos and the tats on his face everywhere and no eyebrows. I. I don't think that this is a terrible figure itself. I think, to the contrary, got the Arkham track pants there. This is actually a really, really good figure as far as multiverse figures go. Because, and multiverse figures, they tend to take, you know, quite a beating for paint apps. And even someone like me who loves multiverse figures, there are times when I'm like, ah, oh, geez, what are you doing? Why is this figure so crappy? What, what happened? This wouldn't be one of them. This figure is actually really, really cool looking as far as how it's done. Not the overall look of Joker. This wouldn't have been the one that I chose, but I think that they did this figure pretty good. And I know that there are definitely better versions of the Jared Leto Joker. This is just, you know, the Mattel Multiverse one that's for a lower price, but it's not bad. Let's get that cane in his hand and get him off to the side. Let's stick him near Diablo. Stay. Or fall over and knock Diablo over too. Good job. And we'll take these collect and connect pieces off to the side so we can build the figure at the end of the video. Next up we have Daddy's little monster, Harley Quinn. The love interest of the Joker, kind of, sometimes, not anymore. I think that she's okay. She's one of the figures that definitely makes me, and made me in the past, more standoffish of collecting the multiverse figures based on the movie. She's got her good points, and she's got her definitely needs improvement points. The good things to start with, she's got the death, he's a little monster, right there on her chest, and it looks good. It's stamped on nicely, and the same thing with the stamped on painted detail on her sculpted fishnet tights. So she's got that going for her. The overall sculpt of the figure isn't terrible. She does seem maybe a little bit wide or shapeless in comparison to how she actually looks in the movie, but she's not terrible. She's just, it's just not great. I don't know what to say. The things I don't like about her, unfortunately, I don't think that this face looks anything like Margot Robbie at all. And maybe the sculpt looks good, but how the paint was then maybe applied after, just really didn't help. Yeah, looking underneath, I think that the head sculpt doesn't look that bad. It's the painting and the hair. The hair looks like a really terrible Halloween cosplay wig. I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's, you know, the boots have been painted by the looks of it kind of hasty. She's not terrible. She's not good. That's 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 what I can say about her. I don't think that she's garbage. I just, if I had to choose between her and any other Harley Quinn movie figure, I would pick any other Harley Quinn movie figure and not her. Her bat looks good, though. Gotta give her some points for the bat. The bat turned out all right. The paint's nice. Oh, good night. All right, Harley, you can stand back here with your sometimes kind of not anymore love interest, the Joker. And of course, she comes with the other leg. So now we have two. Next we have Will Smith's Deadshot, which comes complete with the right arm for Killer Croc, as well as an extra head with the mask and the gun. We'll stick the collect and connect part over here, and then get to the figure. So, for starters, the little tiny gun that he comes with, it's kind of a soft, mushy sort of rubber, maroonish, reddish purple with gold on the bottom and gold on the tip, and it actually just fits right here in a holster down here, right on his leg, so he can quickly grab it and shoot people in the face! And then there's that extra head, which I actually prefer. So let's actually look at the Will Smith head sculpt first. It's not terrible. Like, I can definitely see Will Smith in there. Even with the kind of sloppy, you know, hasty painting. The simpler form of painting that Mattel seems to employ on their figures so that they're cheaper to do. I don't think they got the skin tone quite right, but I can, I can definitely see Will Smith in there. All right, now let's pop it off. On account of it just not being my bag. Uh, 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 uh. And that's the head that I actually prefer. I want my dead shot to actually wear his mask and not be walking around without it. And it's actually not that bad. It looks pretty good compared to the movie. The likeness is there. I like that. And to tell you the truth, I actually really like this figure quite a bit. So far, he's the favorite one out of all the figures that I've looked at. I'm, I'm not going to show all of the figures articulation 
but I will show you this figure's articulation after I get into the details, because it is just a little bit different in one area. So, close up though, the details for this figure are really, really quite nice. The paint is a very simple paint scheme, and that's just the name of the game for Mattel. They have to try and keep those costs down. But I think that they've got it for the most part right. I mean, there is a little bit, you know, of sloppy-ish looking paint, but I think overall, this is a very nicely sculpted and painted figure. I think this is definitely one of the better figures in the wave, for sure. Now, as for that articulation, it's just like everyone else's in the sense it's got the bicep swivel, right? You got the hinge. I mean, everyone knows what a multiverse figure does. That's why I've pretty much just skipped the articulation, right? Ab crunch, which actually in this case doesn't do a whole lot. The armor gets in the way. But the typical articulation for a multiverse figure, you, you know, you're going to see it in all of them, right? Except for... Will Smith has an elbow joint that's kind of strange in that it moves under his glove, if you can see that. It's just different. I don't know. It just seems different. I mean, it doesn't give you a whole lot of articulation, if I'm being honest. I just think that it's, you know, a different way of executing it. They kind of hit it a little bit under the glove. So yeah, I really actually like this figure a lot. I think that it's been painted nicely. They've got all the right details kind of in the right places, clips of ammo, body armor, the right colors, the wrist guns, more guns on the back. It's just, I think that this is definitely one of the standout figures in the wave for sure. Next up we have everyone's favorite boomerang toss and baddie, Captain Boomerang, who comes with the other Collect and Connect arm for Killer Croc. We'll put that off to the side. And three made in China boomerangs. You know, I thought it would be, you know, Captain Boomerang making his own boomerangs himself. I didn't think he'd be outsourcing his work to China, but hey, he did. China, 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 China. Now, the figure itself is actually not bad looking. It's really not a bad looking figure. And you might be saying to yourself, self, isn't that jacket familiar? Well, yes, it absolutely is. It is the exact same sculpt pretty much as the one for the Movie Master's Bane. Don't believe me? Everything is exactly the same. Every curl, every single edge, all the buttons are in the same place. The only thing that is different is that Bane's jacket has these extra little button flaps that are hanging off. But other than that, it is the exact same jacket. Same pockets, same everything. So they just reused the jacket for this character, except for, of course, they would have re-sculpted, you know, different forearms. But other than that, yeah, same, same jacket. Now, this is a take on Captain Boomerang that I honestly was not expecting. Hey, he's got a holster. Why has he got a holster? He doesn't come with a gun. What? He has a holster with no gun? I'm such a dummy. The holster is for the boomerang, of course. I gotcha. The made in China boomerangs just fit in there like that. So how many boomerangs can I stuff in there? That's two. That's three. I don't think all three are supposed to go in there. <laughs> I think I just abused my power. I would pull them out. Anyhow, the word captain on the front of his zip-up sweatshirt doesn't look terrible. I mean, it, it definitely could be neater, but it doesn't look terrible. It's sculpted nicely. He's got his big old pants down there. Got the knees, which have been, what are those knee pads? Yeah, they look like knee pads or something like that. Strange looking pants. You got the knife boot down there. You got the duct tape on the front of the boots. It's actually sculpted pretty darn good. A lot of people knock Mattel and sometimes Mattel deserves it because they put out less than quality products. This one for the money is actually pretty reasonable, especially for what I paid for it. And not only that, but the face sculpt, it's not terrible. Toque, you got the mutton chops. Shut up, phone! That's my stupid phone. You got the mutton chops connecting to the mustache there, the hair sticking out of his toque, a little bit of a paint slop there on his cheek, but overall not terrible. And the eyes. For me, when the eyes are painted poorly, then the figure just really loses a lot of personal value. And with, the, with these, all these figures, except for Harley, really, so far the eyes actually don't look that bad at all. All right, my man, you can wait back there because next we're gonna open up Katana, who comes with the head and the lower section to the Killer Croc Collect and Connect figure. And we'll put those off to the side and focus on the figure itself. This is actually not a terrible figure. There are things I would have executed differently, but, but overall, this is certainly not 
a bad rendition of everyone's favorite soul-stealing, katana-welding, action-figure katana. Ugh. Speaking of those katanas, both of which of them fit right here in each of their scabbards, like so. So she actually has a place to put them. I love it when they do that. I'm making a big deal about it because sometimes you don't get a place to put the character's weapons. There's no holster, no scabbard, no sheath, nothing. Anyhow, she looks pretty darn good. I mean, the, okay, the feet are kind of big and wonky, but I do like the color choices. You've got the paint up here on her upper leg with the writing, which I have no idea what it says. It could say, you suck and smell bad and like to sniff farts, and I would have no idea what it says. I suppose I could just look that up. So she's got the flowers on her jacket, which have been painted actually quite nicely. There's some sculpting detail right here. What is that hanging off of my fingernail kit? Where was I before my fingernail interrupted me? Also, you got the stamp painting here on the back, the little flower. I really should actually, you know what, it'll be on the screen what it actually says if I remember to do it during editing or if I can find out what it says. You got more here on the back of the leg. The figure is sculpted actually quite nicely for what it is. And the flesh tone plastic looks really good as well. Look, they've even sculpted in her little scar down there. Yeah, I, I, I really quite like this. And the face too, it really doesn't look that terrible. It, you know what, with Mattel, as far as I'm concerned, usually what happens is the sculpt starts out pretty good, and then they kind of lose it a little bit in the painting because they go for a much more simple paint kind of scheme, and sometimes they can lose it in that. And then, then when it comes to the hair, quite often the hair totally wrecks it. In this case, though, I don't think it's bad. This is definitely, in my opinion, one of the better figures in the wave, too. I really actually like this figure quite a whole lot. Let's get the swords in our hands so that we can see exactly how much of a double threat she is. I think this is actually a katana and maybe a wakasashi is the name for the smaller ones. Either way, this is actually not a terrible figure. Man, I just sound so bad saying this is actually not a terrible figure. For someone who has collected thousands of dollars worth of Mattel stuff, <laughs> I I just, I can't say if a figure isn't great. I can't say it's it's a great figure if I don't think it's a great figure. I think it's good. Very good, but not great, not excellent. And then finally, we have the Batman. This is actually just a redecoed version of the original Batman v Superman Batman. The gray is actually a lot darker than the original, and the cowl doesn't have that ugly, stupid texturing. So, in my opinion, this is definitely a big improvement over the initial release. Batman comes with the torso piece for the Collect and Connect Killer Croc. We're going to stick that off to the side. A set of bat cuffs for cuffing people upside of the head or, or cuffing them to the bed or whatever. That's not what I meant. He also comes with a little tiny smoke grenade. Three squishy batarangs. Like they really are kind of <laughs> squishy and rubbery and pliable. Also he comes with this little tiny brown and silverish gray bat grapple. And finally he comes with this secondary head that has the underwater breathing apparatus attached to the front of it. As for the Batman figure itself, there really isn't much more that I can say about it that hasn't already been covered by myself and a zillion other action figure reviewers. We know what the articulation abilities and limitations are. We know what the sculpting detail is, that it's actually pretty good. We know that this figure is definitely not a crap figure, but it certainly could have been a lot better for multiple reasons, articulation being one of them, and then the head sculpt being the other. And you know what? I retract that. It's not the head sculpt that kind of stinks for this figure. It's how it was painted that really ended up messing this figure over. The, the head sculpt isn't terrible. It's just how you paint a head sculpt after that will then determine if the figure's face looks really good or if it looks fugly. Case in point, here is my custom Mattel Batman from Dawn of Justice. All I did was change the head. That's it. There really isn't a whole lot more that I can say about it that hasn't been said. So let's stick him off to the back here, along with the rest of the gang, and let's put together that Collect and Connect Killer Croc. Step one, attach the lower half of his body. So let's do that first. There you go. Now we're going to attach the legs on there, and you know you're putting them on the right side because the lines of his track pants. The next step is to attach the arms. There's the first arm, there's the second arm. And finally, now all we have to do is stick on the head. You can see it's got a weird looking peg in comparison to 
what you would usually have. Let's see if I can just mash it, just squish it. Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh. Okay, not gonna lie. That was a little challenging. I guess it just means it's not gonna come off anytime soon. And there we have a fully built Killer Croc collecting connect figure from the Suicide Squad movie. All right, now that we've got them together, let's look at them up close. You got his sneakers there on the bottom with the gold and the green. And you've got his prison, I'm assuming these are like prison pants or something like that. They got the lines down the side and a zipper. Yeah, they're pretty good. And then you have the, the body, the rest of it itself is just him without a shirt on. And it's painted, it's actually painted pretty nicely. You got the sculpting detail to give him the scales. All up his back there, you got the detail work. And then the face. Now, you know what? This is actually a pretty sick looking build a figure. Sorry, collect and collect. Collect. Collect and connect of Killer Croc. Killer Croc's articulation is actually not terrible. The head's on. Well, you saw it's not really a ball peg, but it does have a pretty good range of movement. The shoulders are on that hinge swivel. As we've come to expect from multiverse figures, that's just par for the course since DC Universe Classics. No bicep swivel, although the elbows being single jointed, which, you know, a lot of people don't like that. It is a bit of a drawback. You do have rotation at the elbow, though, there as well. They could have totally forgotten that, and they didn't. You've also got rotation at the wrists. You've got an ab crunch that... And it's a fairly capable ab crunch. You've got your tornado waist to spin around 360, your typical DC Universe classic style groin. You have your thigh cut rotation, your single jointed knees. Do they rotate? Nope, but they are single jointed. And then of course you have your hinged ankles that are not a pivot. So very, very basic earlier multiverse slash DC Universe classic style articulation minus the bicep swivels. Okay, so because this video actually took a lot longer to make than I thought it was going to, I'm going to be very brief in my sum up. All of these figures together, having paid 60 bucks for six of them, four dollars for Rick Flag, and I think it was like 15 bucks for Diablo, I think that I really did get a good deal with these. They're not terrible figures. They're really not. I was maybe a little bit hard on them in the past. I never really said anything about them, but I looked at them and I was like, yeah, they're just... I just don't really want these figures, but having them all in hand, I'm actually a lot more impressed with them than I thought I was going to be. No, they're not top of the line, top notch action figures. They are definitely middle of the road adult collectibles. They're definitely better than something that would be marketed towards children. But here in Canada at Walmart at first release, they would have been about 25 to 26 bucks a figure, which I feel like it's definitely too much for these figures. However, if I break it up, I paid about an average of 10 bucks a figure, which I certainly think is an awesome deal. The paint apps are clean when they need to be. The sculpting detail looks fine enough. It's the typical kind of big, you know, sculpted hands and stuff like that from Mattel, but in general this really isn't a terrible set of action figures. I would probably give it a solid 7 out of 10. I can't give it any more than that due to the articulation problems with some of them, but in general it's still not a terrible set, and if you can find one for reasonably cheap online, I say absolutely go for it. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching this video today. It really does actually mean quite a bit to me that I get so much support on this channel. If you like this video, please leave a like on it. Subscribe by hitting the big red button if you want to see more of my hands and face. Remember to ding the bell if you do so you get notified of brand new videos. Leave any comments you have down in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time. Have an awesome day, super friends, and take care.